in doing these uh, experiments, uh, comparing the two oscilloscopes, I've been using a couple of boards. One made by Rigol. It's called the uh, DS6000. There's also a Siglet demo board that is uh, available and I've used from time to time that has various uh, signals. The uh, There you see a burst signal and things of that sort. But you don't actually have to buy these boards. They're a little bit expensive and there are some alternatives. One of the alternatives that I've used quite a bit is the Arduino. Now this particular Arduino is an Arduino Mega, which I'll talk about for a second. Uh, it's a little more expensive and has, has more features. The one that uh, probably a lot of people are a little more familiar with is the Arduino Uno, which is this board. Uh, the, they run about $25 for a fully uh, licensed version. The, uh, you can get some, uh, some overseas uh, clones for a lot less than that. The reason that I use the Mega on these experiments is that unlike the Uno, which shares the serial bus between the USB, which is the, uh, the connector you see right there, and the USB is the way that you download programs into an Arduino. <clears throat> so because the serial bus is shared with the USB bus, as you're downloading programs, that interferes with any serial communications that's going on. Uh, and there's really no way around that other than to use the software uh, UART on the UNO, uh, which is available, but it's, it's quite slow and it consumes a lot of processor overhead. So what I have uh, generally done is used uh, the Arduino Mega, and one of the reasons is it has a separate serial, uh, in fact it actually has uh, three serial uh, outputs in addition to the serial zero. The serial zero is the one that's shared with the uh, USB port. So what I have set up here is a, a UART test. That is <coughs> some uh, software I don't know how well this is going to work but there is the program, and here is the, the setup, and as you notice, you just set uh, one, uh, one pin to, uh, to be a serial output, 9600 baud. Then you uh, go into a loop, which sends this string that you see right here, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, continually over and over again, blinks the LED, waits, uh, uh, delays 500 uh, milliseconds, uh, basically half a second, uh, goes back around, does it, uh, does it again, and so basically it sends this string and then waits for half a second and then sends the string again and so on. And over here you'll see that there's the LED blinking to show you that uh, the half second pause between each transmission. Over here is the analog discovery. I didn't show you that. The analog discovery connected to this computer. And the purpose is that I have it set up to uh, decode a UART bus, or what some people call a, an RS-232. It's 9600 baud and it's set on, uh, on digital input zero of the uh, analog discovery. You see that here. And then over here is the, uh, is the signal, and I've stopped it. That is, I use a single uh, capture just so that it won't keep writing over and over again. And you'll notice that it has decoded the, uh, the UART. The first is A and then B. C, D, E, F, G. 
The reason that I like this setup and the reason that I use two computers instead of one is to emphasize the fact that the only connection between the analog discovery and this computer is this single pair of wires, the, the serial line and the ground, and the Arduino, which is plugged in to this computer, which is uh, an old uh, Vista uh, system, uh, I'm sorry, an XP system, uh, running Windows XP, and the Arduino uh, operating system is on this computer. Now, you can run both of them on one computer, and in fact, uh, I sometimes do run them both on this computer. The uh, reason that I like to keep them separate is so that it's very clear that the only communication that between the two is that pair of wires. So uh, that is basically the system that I would recommend that be used as kind of the basics in a uh, uh, communications lab where you're doing serial bus uh, work. Now the, the Arduino has a, a large library that includes the other buses, the SPI and the I square C. So you basically can do all your bus experiments with an Arduino. I think I paid about 35 or so dollars for this uh, Mega. And an analog discovery. And of course you need at least one computer to hook everything together. So that is kind of a, a summary of how I would suggest that you go about uh, setting up to do most of the communications, trigger and decode uh, experiments that I've been doing in uh, mostly in part 7 of the Signet v. Rigol. So in the next little segment I'm going to uh, summarize uh, my opinions on the Siglent and the Rigol as well as I think you've guessed by now that when you get to the decode issues particularly in a in a lab teaching lab environment I suggest that you go with an Arduino and an analog discovery that doesn't mean that I'm suggesting that you shouldn't have uh, an oscilloscope that uh, and you can have choices, of course. Uh, the uh, Siglent is uh, a very good value. The Rigol is also an excellent value and a little more capable, partly because of the more channels and so on. But we'll talk more about that in the next video. This segment should wrap up my comparisons between the Rigol and the Siglent uh, oscilloscopes. Uh, if you haven't watched very many of the earlier ones, I suggest that if you want to get a, a real comprehensive view of what I've been doing, that you go back and watch some of those. But I'm going to try to touch on a few important areas in this video and then kind of close this whole uh, series out for now. I'll be coming back to use of an oscilloscope and so on next year, but I need to complete a written report on uh, what I've been doing. These videos are a little bit of a, of a sideline in a way. I hope they're useful to everybody, but the real purpose of these comparisons is to give some guidance to people who are buying oscilloscopes and other equipment for university labs. And most of those decisions are made during the early part of the spring semester. So I want to try to close all this out before the end of the year so that anyone who wants to use this and anyone that uh, I send the written report to will be able to uh, finish their review of my review before they start making those decisions. You may recall this page from a prior uh, summary uh, at the very beginning in which I compared the price of the uh, two units and also reviewed some of the bugs and other things that I found. The Rigol only comes in a four channel and costs $830. Uh, that's the price I verified again this morning on the web. 
the Siglent, on the other hand, only comes with two channels and costs $4.99. Once again, that's a verified web price. The Rigol, you need to uh, pay uh, an extra $191 if you want to add the advanced triggers. The Siglent, all of the triggers that it comes with are included in the $4.99 price. And you'll see in a moment that for that reason, I'm actually only comparing the four-channel Rigol with triggers to the two-channel Siglent with triggers uh, as I move forward. Now, the uh, there are some bugs that uh, I've previously talked about and uh, suggest that you go to like the EEV blog for that first one, a bug in a PLL uh, failing to uh, to synchronize properly and as a result there's some jitter. Uh, there, I found some bugs, or at least I consider them bugs, uh, annoyances, whatever you want to call it, in the Windows trigger as well as in some of the measurement uh, functions. But basically, they're not, I didn't find any really big bugs. I did discover that the uh, Siglent doesn't decode an ASCII bus into AS, or a, an RS-232 or UART bus into ASCII, but that's not uh, too important unless you're doing work in that particular area. So here is, if you recall, I began comparing these with a focus on university lab experiments, primarily in the areas of communications engineering and embedded uh, digital systems. The uh, I've concluded that the, uh, the Rigol that you ought to be comparing is the Rigol with the advanced triggers. The, the, that costs $1,021, whereas the Siglent for, uh, is $499. Now I uh, have below that the number of channels with an asterisk, and the reason is that to uh, to my mind, if you're going to be doing any work that requires, for example, uh, decoding an SPI bus or working with an analog to digital converter or anything of that sort where, where you have multiple signals, you're really much better off with the four channel. However, you do pay a lot more for it and some of that cost difference isn't just the uh, fact that Rigol separates out its triggers. It also costs more to put four channels in an oscilloscope. Okay, down below is sort of my subjective judgment on the, the various parts of each oscilloscope, and then at the very bottom I'll give you kind of my overall. The vertical systems are very, very close. The reason I gave a slight edge to the Siglent is because of its ability to resolve down to a nanosecond, whereas the Rigol only to four nanoseconds, and that's based on public specs. I didn't check that. Horizontal, I give a slight plus to the Rigol, in large part because in the XY mode it will display both the signal and the XY uh, display at the same time, and the signal does not. For acquisitions, the, I gave them both the six. The, there are better acquisition systems, but they are in more expensive scopes. And basically, I would rate both of them as above average, which, by the way, I'm using a zero to ten scale, so five is average. The triggers, the reason that I gave two numbers to the Rigol is if you don't buy the triggers, I'd give them a five. If you buy the triggers, I'd give them an eight, but you pay more. The uh, Siglent, I would give a 7 on triggers. The measurement functions, partly because of the bug or annoyance or whatever you want to call it that I found in the uh, Siglent, I gave it one point less than the Rigol. On the math functions, once again, I gave them uh, the, the Siglent a little less, and the main reason there is because the Rigol has the ability to write a function, a math function, whereas the Siglent does not. 
I didn't do an FFT comparison and the reason is these two scopes are virtually identical on FFT. They're both above average and if you're going to be doing FFT I suggest that you look at some of the videos that were done by Allen W2AEW and by MJ Lorton on FFTs in oscilloscopes. They're excellent and I certainly couldn't do as well. On the display, you may notice I gave the Siglent uh, an extra point, and that's because its ability to do uh, graded as well as color graded display gives it a slight advantage. Overall, I would rate the Rigol and the Siglent as a 7, and I take that into consideration. Uh, in doing so, in doing that measure, I didn't use the decode numbers. The reason is, as I pointed out during that uh, part 7, I don't think I would buy the decodes for the Siglent. And for the Rigol, they're, exp they're an expensive add-on. So, I would buy an analog discovery. It may sound like that I'm trying to be the uh, spokesman for Digilent. I'm not, but I do really like this and the nice thing is that in a university environment you can actually have uh, each student buy their own uh, unit. At the present time uh, it appears that that costs a hundred dollars and you might even be able to get some special discount uh, in quantity from, uh, from Digilent. But a class where each student has their own analog discovery for lab work would really relieve a lot of pressure on university labs because they could do many of these experiments back in their dorm or wherever they could find a PC to hook the analog discovery to. It provides both a generator, that is an arbitrary waveform generator, two-channel oscilloscope, a bunch of other things. Uh, I don't have any connection with Digilent. I don't get anything from them, but I really think this is one of the coming things in uh, particularly electrical engineering education. So I'm going to wrap up at that point. Uh, as I said, I'm going to take a little break on doing the oscilloscope work while I finish up this uh, particular segment. Maybe spend a little family time over the holidays and hopefully be able to get back to some things next year. In the meantime, I do have a couple of restorations that uh, of some vintage equipment that I may upload, but for now uh, have a nice holiday, a nice new year, and I look forward to seeing you.